All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and get started on this one. I'm going to be doing some acrylic painting. I'll be working on a rainforest scene using acrylics. So for this, I'm just going to go ahead and get started on the painting. I'm not going to worry about sketching it out. some brighter tones back here just to have a more decent area covered up. Now certain areas are going to be really white, just you know the foam being formed by the waterfalls in the water and um, Highlights on things like leaves from being wet because again this is a rainforest so there is a degree of wetness to everything. Right now we just have some really solid colors and just like big masses of color so now I'm going to go in with some um, lighter tones to kind of start defining things. Just if you look at the brush itself, let me put it right against this lighter color so you can kind of maybe see it better. If you look at the brush itself, the colors are not blended within the brush. So when I do different strokes like this, it has already a um, difference in tones and values throughout the stroke. So that kind of creates an easier way to start creating um, some details and, and adding some different values to the painting without having to painstakingly go in there and add each different value individually. Now um, I'm going to go in and just using the same brush I am going to do the same to the water. So I'm just adding different values. Um, I'm starting to add um, more clear, um, distinguishable colors to certain areas. There's a lot of algae and moss and, and um, green life growing all over the rocks. So now I'm trying to bring that in. shading is quite diffused uh, meaning it doesn't have any sharp or clear edges although a lot of rocks are soft and smooth it does they actually do benefit and look a lot better in a painting when um, we emphasize the difference in sharpness and edges some trees and uh, coming through here so I'm going to go ahead and add those now. So if I wanted something a little more, more um, defined I would get a smaller brush to add the details but again this is not about being perfect. Paint on the paintbrush that on, on the end of the angle I have some a good amount of paint there and then that's what I'm using to kind of create the a couple of lines here and there to kind of give it a an aspect to that area like there are vines growing through. Down here it's where your typical foam or splash of the water occurs where it, it's it's kind of builds up up from it. I am adding darker tones there although it's going to mainly be covered by white um, that just allows for the contrast of any white I put on top because obviously it's going to be some sort of texture to it to make it not look like just a blob 
so that any white I put on top just by the virtue of having a darker color underneath it will show some more contrast and then that will that will make the lights look lighter if the colors near it are darker now I um, went through in a lot of the rocks and I've added some more shading around it similar to what I'm going to do down here um, it gives the the color more contrast so when we are depicting the water hitting the rocks it shows up a little bit better and it's a little bit more obvious for us we also gotta think the water is somewhat see-through so you will see some of the rock underneath the water so i'm trying to add there's a little bit of a stream um, coming down through here so all I'm going to do is just kind of lightly rub my finger on so it's not such a strong, powerful light. Creating all the water foam or the white areas of the water. And again, I don't want for it to be this pure white. So I'm kind of putting some color down and then just brushing my finger on it. Um, to take some of the color away and then to also kind of spread the color. I'm kind of liking it how it is. I could take it a lot further, but I don't think I'm going to. I do feel like I do want to add, um, hmm. I do feel like I want to add some more highlights to some of these rocks. get an almost just straight out of the tube green and that's going to really create a sensation of um, this is like right on my face and then I'm just gonna go through and just boop, boop, just really add some massive highlights throughout certain areas uh, there is not a dead tree but there is a tree that has a small amount of leaves that is coming diagonally from the foreground like from here across this way and again what that's going to do is that's going to add layers to the drawing without the layers coming from the bottom to the back of the painting I'm also going to just barely off the edge I am going to add another tree that is going to be similar to the one in the foreground um, and different brush strokes and different pressures because the main reason how you can actually get that going from very thin to a thicker line is just by um, changing the pressure of the brush so how hard you push that on it stuff like this is add a lot of little branches um, either throughout or near the end of the um, main branches because trees usually of any distant size tend to have a lot of small branching so I'd like to add that um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to a I'm going to make myself my life a little bit easier I'm going to switch to a smaller brush because this is the brush I used to make all those tiny little lines throughout that um, probably are not being picked up very well by the camera um, so why am I gonna make my life so difficult using a brush that's not meant to do small detail like that so I'm gonna go ahead and um, here it is look around for a brush that's very very small that um, is meant for that. This tree is sadly dead. I killed it. Sorry, tree. Um, you are a good tree where you were alive. But for the purposes of this painting, you are now dead. Um, so now we have 
a silhouette of a tree going across, which adds a lot, but I don't think that um, the silhouette is the look I'm going for. So although it's going to remain pretty dark and a lot of the branches will remain pretty dark, I am going to add um, I am going to add to it. I am going to add some dimension to it. And these leaves right here are still in front of it. They're still the closest thing to the camera. So it doesn't make sense for no light to be able to hit this tree from this side while it does on the leaves. So that is why I'm going to add some more shade into this tree. It's the best way to give some dimension to the thicker, thicker area, thicker, thicker, thicker. Um, some of the thicker area areas of the um, branching on the top. Finishes off this part of the painting a lot nicely, a lot nicer. I can't speak today. I'm kind of digging uh, this little dead tree. He had to die. He died for a good cause. Alrighty. I um, think this is done for the most part. I want to call it finished because it is to me. I'm going to add my signature in this blue because I like blue there it is brush down painting finished I think I just stuck my head in the camera view but so I'm going to try to do this again. There we go. So there it is. Here's the finished piece. Overall, this took me... I can actually do the math because I recorded the whole thing, but... Um, it didn't take me that long. My favorite part are just leaves right over here because they got the really distinct high um, shine to it because they're wet. But I like it all. If you watched the whole video, I would like to thank you very much for watching. And um, hopefully you decide to keep watching more of my work. And I will really appreciate it if you do so. You learn something from it great if the only thing you learn is that this is how I paint and sometimes I can't speak correctly then hey that's what you learned I hope you guys have a good day or a good night see you guys later bye